So we completely tore apart the AK-50, and you're probably wondering what happened here. For the record, I entirely blame Patrick Roberts. So this happened Thursday night before NRA. We don't have an NRA video, by the way, I'm sorry. Uh, Paul and our tactical actually sniped my camera guy away from me during that event, so we don't really have an NRA video, which is okay. I was kind of busy working. One of the big highlights from the NRA show that we do have footage of because Paul and our tactical was also there was the Stark meet and greet at Gas Monkey Bar and Grill in Dallas. That was on the Thursday before the show started, and it was just an awesome event. We had a lot of amazing people there and a lot of great friends. We had Andrew from GY6Vids, Mr. Guns and Gear, Garantham, Manspot. We had a ton of people there, just an awesome time. But whenever you get that crew of people together, you have a lot of drinking. And after that place closed at midnight, a big crew of us headed over to the country bar across the street, which was more like a big rave club that was themed like a George Strait album. What happened next was a little fuzzy, but I'm told Delance got some good footage of it. I rode the bull. After some great bull riding advice from Patrick Roberts, I successfully sprained the ever-living shit out of my wrist, and it's been about two weeks and it's still not right. Which was great because I had a full weekend of shaking people's hands, which was a lot of fun. So that's really all I'm going to talk about NRA. NRA was just a big success, but uh, now let's move over to the AK-50. A lot of news there. So I'm really, really lucky enough to have a lot of great people in the firearms industry that uh, I don't know if they want to be... Uh, call that publicly or not, but a lot of great people that are helping me out with this project that are really giving me a lot of advice. So that mystery problem that we ran into at the end of the last video, which is doing exceptionally well by the way, I must point out, thank you to the Firearm Vlog for, for reposting that out. The big problem we were running into is the rifle was having stoppages for, it, it looked like no reason. We had the gas that was dialed in almost perfectly, and all of a sudden the bolt wanted to not unlock. and. I was really kind of racking my brain as to why that problem was happening. Because every problem we've had on this gun so far, we've been able to explain fairly easily and, and adjust and then fix it. This was throwing a real kink in the wire. So I talked to a couple of my industry friends and uh, people who are honestly a lot smarter than I am when it comes to this sort of stuff. And what it came down to is a heat treat problem. Basically, the long and short of it is, uh, because the bolt and the barrel extension are the same heat treat of the same metal, they're the same hardness. They were both about, I think, about 45, 46 Rockwell. When the gun fired, it pushed the bolt back into the barrel extension, which is supposed to happen, okay, that's, that's what it's for, is to lock it into place. But as it was unlocking under heat and pressure, probably exacerbated by the fact that we didn't have uh, enough distance between the gas port and the chamber, that probably exacerbated the problem, but it was pushing them into each other, and because they were so similar in metal and in heat treat, it was causing galling. Basically, they were trying to kind of meld together, and uh, apparently that's a big no-no. And that's that's a real that's a problem we didn't really anticipate, but that is why this, these trial periods are so important because we get this valuable data like this. Basically, the fix to that is fairly easy. We just happened by a stroke of luck uh, to have an extra barrel extension laying around. So we're taking that, I've already dropped it off at the heat treater, we're getting that done to a higher heat treat, more like 50, 52 Rockwell. I'm fairly confident in the ability to bump up the hardness on that without making it too brittle, just by the way it's designed. Then we're going to polish out the galling on the bolt and try it again and see if we've alleviated the problem. I think between changing the heat treats and also now that we have the port farther out on the barrel uh, and there's not as much immediate pressure as it's unlocking and trying to pull the cartridge out, I think it's going to solve a lot of our problems. But that still means that we had to completely pull the gun apart. So uh, the other day I was in Chris's shop, we were tearing the gun down, we had pressed the pins out, we had pressed the barrel out, which is actually kind of neat because we, for the first time, got to see the whole gun disassembled since we put it together. So we've put dozens of rounds through this thing and now we got to see the inside of some of the parts and how things are holding up. And really the answer is exceptionally well considering these aren't heat treated quite to the spec that we want them to be. And in fact, we're changing the metals on the V3 uh, when we when we roll that out, uh, the barrel extension is going to be A2 steel, uh, thanks to a recommendation of another friend. And a lot of the stuff's going to be beefier too. We've actually overbuilt it again just to be on the safe side. And uh, just for being the first revision of a lot of this stuff and the first draft of some of the parts uh, as far as material and heat treat, it's holding up great. Honestly, there's minimal um, minimal wear, minimal deformation. It's uh, it's really it's a trooper, all things considered and uh, the V3 is only going to be better. So what does that mean going forward? So what we're going to do is as soon as, I think it's going to be tomorrow, I'm going to go pick up the new barrel extension from the heat treater. 
we're going to install on the gun, which is just pressing the barrel extension in and then pressing the barrel into the extension. Uh, moving forward, we're going to thread the barrel into the extension. But uh, this is kind of a V1, V2 thing, so it was, uh, it was still pressed and uh, drilled and pinned and everything like that. So we're going to press everything back in, uh, re-headspace it, make sure everything is still in check, which headspace held up good, which honestly kind of surprising. I was curious how that was going to play out, but we haven't had any trouble yet. So you know, that's, uh, that's pretty lucky, all things considered. I'm, I'm very happy with, with how everything's played out. But we're going to put everything together, and we're going to test, because we, we didn't really get to test the new gas system. We thought we dialed in the gas 100%, but then we ran into the galling issues. So now we're going to test the gas and see if we've got it 100% dialed in. So we're going to see if uh, we've alleviated the chamber pressure problem, which I believe we have, because we've moved the port further out, and with a smaller port, now it's still overgassed the, the last time we tried it. So I think we've alleviated a huge problem with the chamber having too much pressure. So we'll judge by if we get a good extraction, a good ejection, the bolt carrier has a nice smooth return to battery, and uh, we'll check the casings to see if the extractor is still ripping the casing out too hard. But uh, honestly, fingers crossed guys, I think we have it figured out. So after that, it's just figuring out magazine feed angles and everything, and then what we need to do to kind of make that work. And after that, we're ready for the V3. And honestly, I've just spent a lot of time on all the V3 stuff as far as uh, how the handguards fit together and how everything fits and we've made a lot of changes but man this gun is looking better than ever and I'm really excited for you guys to be able to see it so that's coming up in the next couple weeks uh, we should have footage I really hope to have a mag feeding 50 in the next couple weeks we'll see what happens but that's gonna be a really exciting moment in the project I think the first time we're able to fire, fire around from a magazine in quick succession one two three that is going to be a moment bigger than the first time we were able to fire and extract and eject. That's just going to be huge because that is the last big step to figure out in this project. And we are internally, all my guys, super excited. Yeah, that's uh, that's the state of the 50. That's <laughs> the state of the 50 address. I should start calling it that. But honestly, thank you guys so much for following along the project. Um, somebody pointed out to me the other day, this is probably the best documented creation of a firearm in history. You know, companies usually don't do this. They, they don't show you the development side of things because normally it's super hush-hush and everything and we kind of went about that all wrong, but <laughs> we, uh, we've been really documenting every step along the way and everything we're getting wrong. I want to show you guys everything we screw up. Every time we fail, every time we, we get something wrong, every time we have to correct, I want to show you guys all of that. And that way when this gun is finally released to the public and it's ready for production, you guys are going to know all the hard work and the smart people that were involved and I've brought together uh, to make this gun a reality. And that's super important to me. So I really, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I'm glad you're getting some value out of it. And <laughs> I'm really excited to get this damn thing shooting. So again, thanks for following along and yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Mike is going to kill me for telling you this story. So later on that night, the night I sprained my wrist, mind you, we, we got separated from Mike. Uh, we're all going back to the same Airbnb, but he went back early and he had the keys. Now this is like an apartment building, so you had to have the key fob to even get into the building, let alone the apartment room itself. And that place was locked down, so we got there about 20 minutes after Mike did, and he sent me a text about 10 minutes before we got there. Hey man, I'm, I'm real tired, I'm thinking I'm going to uh, lay down or something like that. I'm like, no, 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 Mike, Mike, we'll, we'll be right there, because I know when, when drunk Mike lays down or when drunk anybody lays down. You're not getting him back up. It's just not gonna happen. My phone is at 1% battery at this point. We get to the apartment complex, we are locked out. I called Mike 30 times before my phone died. It, it was just, it was not happening. We're looking for all these ways. We're going through the, the parking garage and everything, trying to figure out where is the weak spot in the defenses of this apartment complex. We're looking like we're trying to break in. You know, I'm in a half suit. I got my arms slung. So it's like four o'clock in the morning and we're going around the building looking for an entrance that's not completely locked off that you needed the little key fob to get into. I finally found one. I found one that was cracked, just barely open, but it was on the other side of about what, what would you say, like an eight-foot fence? Yeah, with a sprained wrist, freshly sprained, I had to climb, in a suit, mind you, climb this fence, uh, not well either, because I collapsed on the other side. <laughs> that was fond, fond memory. And uh, get to the door. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? I, I kind of circumnavigate, I remember where we are, our, our room is. We go there, knocking on the door, knocking on the door. Mike, wake up, let us in, Mike, Mike, Mike. 
getting real discouraged at this point about to sleep in a hallway of an apartment complex that I rented, and the door's unlocked. We'd never checked the door. So, we actually do, we walk in, and Mike is sound the hell asleep. It's just knocked the hell out, so. That was my exciting NRA story. That was probably really, really long for one of our end credits sequence, but nobody says these conventions are boring.